Mario Bernardi, and I am I and my brother Aid have think we are the longest parishioners from St. Mary's Parish. And so I thought I would uh, share some of my memories and some of the was red brick and one of them was light brick and they were sitting by the evergreen tree there and then pressured parishioners even got to go out and vote on which one they wanted. My vote was a winning one. <laughs> <laughs> local uh, local parishioners that worked in the church were Denny Poland worked for the contractor and Dwayne Hank Relic worked for the plumber from Wood Lake. The new, new church was dedicated in 1964. It had a bright blue north wall and the new carpet and the blue carpet was like that piece of carpet that is behind the flowers there with the uh, altar cloth covered. <laughs> It was a beautiful church. We were proud of it. It was a wonderful place to go to visit with Jesus. This wall over here was moved whole from the west wall of the church, and it was taken from the, between the second and the third windows. And that's another story. The letters on the church, which say Church of St. Mary, were on the south side of the church. And the statue that's uh, in front was donated by Otto Wagner in memory of Martha Hengel Wagner. Martha died in 1967. <coughs> the white church, or the old wooden church, was moved to the east by Russell Berg in July of 1963. The bell on the was on the original church. To get it down, it was tipped on its slide and slid down with ropes tied on it. My brother Leonard was in charge of that. The bell was placed on sawhorses and Joe Lissy polished it with Brassel. Being in the military, I thought Brassel was only used to polish belt buckles. Joe died in 1964, and he's buried over in that part of the cemetery. And I don't know if the bell uh, was on the St. Henry Church or not. The bell frame was made from the two pillars that were in the back of the church by the altar. We saw, okay. Uh, we saw Father Moraz last Sunday, and he sent his greetings to all of us. And he said, while you're out here, take time or make a visit to Monsignor Grabowski and Father Sal Pistoka for him. I would like to thank the main contractors, uh, Marty Gochi <coughs> and Dave Brosher and all others who helped in any way, from cleaning bricks, making the bell frame, filling ground, planting shrubs, trees, and painting, cleaning up, and so on and so forth. Special thanks to the cemetery committee. As I read your name, Please stand and remain standing. 
David Kramer. Kevin Kramer, son of Floyd Kramer. Brandon Orobeck. Son, Scott Bernardi, and myself. Now we will go, the committee will go over it and ring the bell so we're ready for the mass.
This needs to be plugged into the bottom of the other one.
Before we begin our Mass this evening, I just want to begin by apologizing, first of all, for the extreme tardiness. Um, today did not work out the way I had expected. I had Mass this morning, and then right before Mass, finding out that a parishioner died, Lonnie Sutton. So if you can keep him and his family in prayer. And so as soon as Mass was done, I ran up to the hospital, and while I was there, there was a, a mother and a child who uh, the child wasn't doing very well, so I went and blessed the child. And in the meantime, I was, I was hoping to meet with uh, uh, part of the staff that met on Tuesday, the other part met today for a retreat. And so uh, a six hour retreat actually got condensed to a four hour retreat. And then the way back then um, I got a detour and um, I didn't get pulled over. So at least that's something that was nice today. So um, I apologize for, and then trying to get things set up. So I do apologize for being here, I'm late, um, but I thank you all for being here. It's a wonderful testament of your faith, but ultimately it's a wonderful reminder to us of who God is for us and God, how God calls us into that life of love and service. And so as we gather here this evening in this life of love and service, we gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. And so as we gather here this evening, celebrating this wonderful mass and blessing of these wonderful monuments, we gather also on this day celebrating the memorial of St. Jane Frances de Chantel, who was a wonderful saint, and because she's a saint, but what also makes her so wonderful is the fact of her vocation. Um, oftentimes when we think about vocations or we celebrate saints, we recognize those bishops or popes or priests or religious who uh, especially formed religious communities. But here we have someone who was uh, a wife and a mother, just totally giving herself over to her family and to the church. Uh, and later on, um, joined a religious community. But what makes her so profound is her faith and how she lived it out in her vocation. And so as we begin our celebration, let us begin by acknowledging those times when we failed to carry out our vocation, those times we failed in saying yes to what God is calling us to. And so as we begin our celebration, we begin by acknowledging our sins as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, what I have done, what I have failed to do, what I have done, what I have failed to do, what I have done, what I have failed to do, what I have done, what I have failed to do, what I have done, what I have failed to do, what I have done, what I have failed to do, what I have done, what I have failed to do, what I have done, what I have failed to do, what I have done, what I have failed to do, what I Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, who made St. Jane Francis de Chantel radiant with outstanding merits in different walks of life, grant us through her intercession that walking faithfully in our vocation, we may constantly be examples of shining light to our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. And no surprise, I forgot to get somebody to lecture. Is there anybody that really wants to read really bad? Otherwise, Deacon can definitely do the readings. said to Joshua, Today I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all Israel, that they may know I am with you, and I was with Moses. Now command the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant to come to a halt in the Jordan when you reach the edge of the waters. So 
Joshua said to the children of Israel, Come here and listen to the word of the Lord your God. This is how you will know that there is a living God in your midst, who at your approach will dis dispossess the Canaanites. The ark of the covenant of the Lord of the whole earth will proceed you into the Jordan. Then, when the soles of the feet of the priests carried the ark of the Lord, the Lord of the whole earth, touch the water of the Jordan, it will cease to flow, for the water flowing down from upstream will halt in a solid bank. The people struck their tents to cross the Jordan, with the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant ahead of them. No sooner had the, these priestly bearers of the Ark waded into the waters at the edge of the Jordan, which overflows all its banks during the entire season of the harvest, than the waters flowing from the upstream halted, backing up in a solid mass for a very great distance indeed, from Adam, a city in the direction of Zarantham, while those flowing downstream toward the salt sea of the Arabah disappeared entirely. Thus the people crossed over opposite Jericho, while all Israel crossed over on dry ground. The priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord remained motionless on dry ground in the bed of the Jordan until the whole nation had completed the passage. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A responsorial. Alleluia. When Israel came forth from Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of alien tongue, Judah became his sanctuary, Israel his domain. Hallelujah. The sea beheld the, the, and fled, the Jordan turned back, the mountains skipped like rams, the hills like the lambs of the flock. Hallelujah. Why is it, O sea, that you flee, O Jordan, that you turn back, you mountains that you skipped like rams, you hills like the lambs of the flock? Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive him? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold, along with his wife, his children, and all his property, in payment of the debt. At that, the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, be patient with me, and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant? as I had pity on you. Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturer until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly father do to you 
unless each of you forgives his brother from his heart. When Jesus finished these words, he left Galilee and went to the district of Judea across the Jordan. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It is amazing how God does work in our lives. And one of those examples I see in the readings that the church has for us um, this evening. These readings come from the 19th week in ordinary time on Thursday. However, I think they are also very fitting for the memorial that we celebrate in St. Jane Francis de Chantel. And part of it is, is one of the um, parts in the gospel talks about this idea of a loan or a debt. St. Jane was married to Christoph, and she um, not only married a wonderful husband, but she also inherited a huge debt from him as well. That he already was um, in debt quite a lot. And, and yet, despite that, she, because of God's wisdom, God used her to help her, him and the family to overcome the debt that they were suffering from. And so she was, uh, she's such a, a grace-filled woman, faith-filled woman. It was said that when she was a young girl, her dad always would discuss the faith with his children, allowing them to talk about the faith, even in, in controversial issues and things of that sort. And, and they would talk about their faith and do it daily. And so it was because of that life that she had growing up that it filtered even in her um, up older years as well, especially as a wife and mother, that she continued that same idea and the importance of living out one's faith. And so fast forward then, she also not only was uh, a faithful woman, but she had a wonderful sense of humor as well. It said that they would, you know, people would jokingly say that, you know, she shares some of the stupid, stupidest jokes, but some reason they always were funny the way she shared it. And, and I think it just shows the joy that she had because, again, because of her faith. And it was that faith that she continued to share with her family and lead her family in as well. Um, she also cared for the sick. Um, the poor people in the area, she would open up her house and the people would come in and for soup and meals and things of the sort. And there'd be this huge line that would go out of the house and, and people would come in, they'd get their food, they'd leave and they'd quick eat it, go around and get back in the line and come through the line again. And what was interesting is she would try to, uh, you know, she'd just keep giving out then the food, the food, and she wouldn't stop. And people would complain saying, you realize that these people are coming through the line a second time or maybe even a third. You know, maybe you should refuse them from, from coming. And she said, well, what if God would do the same thing to me? That as time and time again, as I keep going to God, what if God decides to refuse to, um, to help me out and to respond to me just because I keep going to him? And so it was because of that that she refused to, um, to stop you know, sharing the food. She continued to share the food because of the mercy and the love that God had for her, kind of like our gospel. As Peter's asking Jesus, how many times must I forgive my brother? Jesus says not seven times, but 77 times. In other words, that we're always called to forgive. We're always called to be merciful because God is merciful to us. And today we celebrate a wonderful example of someone who's showing us that mercy through her life and her witness. That she is that, that wonderful conduit or that grace between God and us. That wonderful example of how we too can be uh, open to the own, our own vocation. But it is in that vocation that we continue to serve God and to serve one another, and that we continue to live out that life with joy and faithfulness. Kind of like the priests in our Old Testament from the book of Joshua. And here we have Joshua bringing the people through the desert, and finally now they're at the foot of the, the Jordan River, and they're seeing the promised land on the other side of the river. And so as they're standing there, God told Joshua, and Joshua told the priests, go ahead and take the Ark of the Covenant, and as soon as your feet touches the water, the water will cease on the river and so these priests must have had faith they had to trust because it's like okay i don't know how this is going to happen but maybe they've heard stories obviously of god helping um the people of israel pass through the red sea with moses' help so those priests took that stuff in the water and sure enough the water stopped and from there the, the israelites were able to go from the land of the desert where they've been wandering around for 40 years and now be able to step in to the promised land so those priests were instruments of god and for god for the people of israel and today like i said we celebrate how saint jane francis de chantel is a wonderful example to us as we go forward as well and not only in her faith not only in her joy not only in her service of reaching out to the poor 
and even by her example of forgiveness. As we heard Jesus in our gospel forgiving 77 times, her husband died at a young age. He was killed in a hunting accident. And right before he died, he forgave the hunter that shot him, or that killed him. And even though um, he, you know, he was dying, he told that same hunter, you know, not to be so guilt stricken because of, of, the, of the killing. And he's trying to comfort and even helping this other person out as he is about to die himself. That even he was able to forgive the one who ended up killing him. And at the same time, it took, you know, St. Jane a little bit to forgive. Finally, she was able to, you know, greet this man across the street. And, and eventually she was even, even able to open up her home to this man. And eventually after that, she even became the godmother of one of his children. And so we have once again an example that God has given to us in St. Jane of forgiveness, of mercy. And likewise, we too are called to do the same, to be that gap, to be that bridge, you know, for the people that God has entrusted to our care and to help them and ourselves to bring ourselves closer to God, to be living memorials of God's presence here before us. And as you notice on the worship aid, I was kind of kind of deciding, well, are we going to call this a blessing of, of memorials or a blessing of monuments? Well, yes, these are monuments. Yes, they are structures that have been so wonderfully put together. And so I cannot say how much I am so pleased with the, the people that put these monuments together and, and did a beautiful job. Again, they're a sign of God's goodness to us and how God used these individuals to glorify him through these wonderful mon monuments that were created. But they are memorials. They're wonderful reminders to us memorializing our parish here at St. Mary's, how many people over the years did the same thing that these individuals did with these monuments. They built the church, they built the churches, they built our parishes, and they did this because of service to God and the service of one another. And so what we are doing is whenever we look at these memorials, we are memorializing not necessarily what we once had, but we are memorializing what God is calling us to be today is to be the priests like the Old Testament. By our very baptism, we share in the priestly office of Christ by offering our lives as a sacrifice to God, and that we do it with trust. Just like the priests of the Old Testament trusted in God as he took that first step into the Jordan River, that we too may put our faith and our trust in God, that we too might help others, just like they helped the Israelites go into the Promised Land through the Jordan River, that God will use us to help others to get closer to God, to draw themselves closer to God, to help us to go from you know the desert of our lives, the struggles that we experience, into the joy of the promised land. Not only in the life that is to come, but that we can experience that joy here um, on this earth. And so as we gather here this day, we ask that St. Jane Francis de Chantel will help us with her prayers. That we too can not only be an example, but a gap, a bridge, a way to bring others closer to God as she has brought her family and now also us through her prayers and her intercession and example. Let us pray that by our priestly example that we true too might trust in God, that we may be living memorials um, of what God is calling us to, is to be vessels of God's grace and sharing that grace with one another. And so the vessels that you see here on this altar um, are the ones that we had here at St. Mary's and they got refurbished. You can see they're so beautifully done like these monuments that we have here as well, memorializing us that we are called to be fed by Christ and go forth and to feed others with Christ. Likewise, we have the processional cross here from our church, reminding us that Christ is leading us and guiding us and asking us to lead others closer to him as well. The vestment that I'm wearing is also the vestment from our church, reminding that we are always called to clothe ourselves with our Lord. And so as we go forth, let us pray that God will help us to be that example, to be that wonderful witness of God's love, leading others and ourselves closer to him. And that with the help of St. Jane Francis de Chantel, we ask that God will help us to lead others closer to him by our faith, by our humor, by our service, by reaching out to those who are suffering among us through our wonderful example of forgiveness so that hopefully one day we too, like her, will be counted among the saints in heaven. And so let us stand as we continue to turn ourselves to God. We ask God's blessings upon this water that will now be used to um, bless these monuments.
First of all, we ask God's blessings upon this water. My dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water that he has created, which will be sprinkled on us as a memorial of our baptism. May he help us by grace to remain faithful to the spirit we have received. Almighty and ever-living God, who willed that through water, the fountain of life and the source of purification, even souls should be cleansed and receive the gift of eternal life, be pleased, we pray, to bless this water by which we seek protection on this your day, O Lord. Renew the living spring of your grace within us and grant that by this water we may be defended from all ills of spirit and body and so approach you with hearts made clean and worthily receive your salvation through Christ our Lord. And so my dear brothers and sisters, we are gathered here today to bless these images, these monuments, which have been installed and erected as we celebrate and remember our wonderful faith-filled community. Before they are blessed, we must be properly disposed and have a clear appreciation of the meaning of our celebration. When the church blesses an image or statue and presents it for public veneration by the faithful, it does so by the following reasons that when we look at the representation of those who have followed Christ faithfully, especially here in our parish for so many years, we will be motivated to seek the city that is to come, the promised land that awaits us, that we will learn the way that will enable us more surely to attain complete union with Christ, that as we struggle along with our earthly cares, we will be mindful of the saints, those friends and co-heirs of Christ, who are also our brothers and sisters and our special benefactors. That we, will be, that we will remember how they love us, are near us, intercede ceaselessly for us, and are joined to us in marvelous communion. Today, we have genuine reason to rejoice because we are about to bless two new images, that of the bell that has been used so, for so many years in calling people to prayer, as well as the statue of our blessed Virgin Mary and the wall that signifies our church building that was prayed in and was used for adoration. The image of these two images remind us of God himself and his wonderful love that has been poured out for us, the water that came forth from his side along with that blood, the wellspring of the church's sacraments that were celebrated in its walls, so that all might draw joy water joyfully from the springs of salvation. The image of our blessed mother reminds us of the love that she has for us in giving us her son and inviting us to share her son with those around us, and likewise the bell that called us together for prayer, may call our hearts always to prayer, not only when it is wrong, but every moment, every day of our lives. We turn to God now this day in prayer for blessing over these images. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. The Lord be with you. Almighty, ever living God, everlasting God, who do not forbid us to carve or paint likenesses of your saints, in order that whenever, who do not forbid us to carve or paint likenesses of your saints, replicas of their love for us in service and prayer, in order that whenever we look at them with our bodily eyes, we may call to mind their holy lives, as well as the other sacramentals that call us to prayer, like this bell, resolve to follow their footsteps. May it please you to bless to hollow this monument, which has been made in memory and honor of those who have continued to be called together in prayer for so many years here at St. Mary's. Send your spirit upon us and grant that all who in his presence may devote, may pay devout homage to your only begotten son through the help of Mary and the saints. May by their prayers, their merits, those who have gone before us, obtain your grace in this life and everlasting glory in the life to come through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so may God bless this monument and in those who prepare who put it together and erected it for us this day in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.
And for sound purposes, I'll just stay here, but I'll ask God's blessing upon the monument over there with the words and the prayer and the blessing, and then I'll process over there then with the holy water. Once again, our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty everlasting God, who do not forbid us to carve or paint image like or paint likenesses of your saints, in order that whenever we look at them with our bodily eyes, we may call to mind their holy lives and resolve to follow in their footsteps. May it please you to bless and to hollow this statue of our blessed mother, as well as the structure behind it representing the church that has been used so many years for prayer and adoration. Grant that all who in its presence pay devout homage to your only begotten son, as well as honoring our blessed Mary, may by his or her merits and intercession obtain your grace in this life and everlasting glory in the life to come through Christ our Lord. So let's stand and bring our prayers and petitions before God. For the church, that it may be an instrument of peace and reconciliation, so as to bring hope to our broken and struggling world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who have become hard of heart, that the Holy Spirit may help them to see life and people differently so that there is a peace in relationship. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For those nations which are despairing of peace, that God will shine upon them his enduring light and show them the path which leads to mercy and justice. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our 
that the spirit of the wisdom by which St. Jane Francis, Francis de Chantal first raised her family and then guided the sisters of the visitation will be received by those of today who combine the double vocations as parents and as religious persons. We pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our that those who care for this cemetery will persevere in their service. We pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our for respect for life from conception to natural death and an end to abortion. We pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our that all the departed will enjoy eternal light and peace, especially the living and deceased members of St. Mary's parish for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. Lord God, we ask you to indeed hear our prayers, those spoken, those we hold deep in our hearts. Transform our hearts and our lives to ever be more faithful to you through the wonderful witness and example of St. Jane Francis de Chantal. Hear us now as we are called to be servants, living out our priestly vocation of service to you and your church. We ask all this, bring our prayers and our lives to you this day, and blessings upon this parish, members who are with us and those who have gone before us in faith. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray to please be seated. are you lord god of all creation for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you fruit of the earth and work of human hands it will become for us the bread of life blessed are you lord god of all creation for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you fruit of the vine and work of human hands it will become our spiritual drink
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Most merciful God, who are pleased to create and blessed Jane Francis de Chantel, the new man in your image, the old having passed away, graciously grant, we pray, that renewed like her, we may offer you the acceptable sacrifice of conciliation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly, it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ, for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence, by which you call human nature back to its original holiness, and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. A similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me Mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, 
giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. right this evening um, deacon I, the deacon and I will offer the body of Christ um, two stations here down the center aisle so just come down the center and then just go back to your to your chairs uh, for those of you who are staying in your vehicles we will come and bring communion to you afterwards uh, just make sure that uh, if there's somebody that we forget or that we need to go to uh, please let us know at that time Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be yours.
before the blessed sacrament is consumed. Did we miss anybody that you're in, that you know of? Anyone in the car? By the power of this sacrament, Lord, we pray, lead us always in your love through the example of blessed St. Jane Francis de Chantel and bring us, bring to fulfillment the good work you have begun in us until the day of Christ Jesus, who lives and reigns forever and ever. And before we go forth, I just want to take this opportunity once again. I, again, words can't say it enough that uh, these two monuments are such wonderful testament to, to God's goodness, obviously, because God is good. God blesses us with a beautiful evening. It could be humid and hot and nasty. Um, so we're definitely grateful for this weather, but we're grateful for the talent of those individuals who helped, um, again, create these two wonderful monuments. And so on behalf of us here this evening, as well as those who will be looking upon it, I just want to say thank you to those who helped with it. Uh, help plan it, help um, uh, build it and create it and you clean up afterwards with it. So uh, let's give them a round of applause. And you even got a woo woo out of it too yet. Um, also thanks to all who helped with tonight in getting things set up and uh, bringing things forward, uh, planning this. Um, there is going to be a light lunch or a light supper here afterwards. Um, I'm not sure if we have some place to set it out or the table here, yeah. Um, so we'll sit on the table, there's sandwiches, chips, and, uh, and cookies, and water, uh, courtesy of uh, sulfur's uh, providing it. So, um, no, I should say, they're not providing it, they just put it together. So I want to make sure not that they think that they're paying for it. So anyways, they created it, put it that way. Um, so, and then afterwards, after our mass, uh, after the closing hymn, uh, we're going to do a special recognition as well. So stay tuned after that. Uh, but I just want to thank all of you for your wonderful presence this evening, your wonderful witness of faith. Um, let us pray that the Eucharist that we just received may help transform us to be living day saints, to live out that, that priestly office of Christ, serving and, and trusting in Christ as we go forth serving and bringing the gap of Christ to one another. The Lord be with you. With Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God always keep every adversity far from you and in his kindness pour out upon you the gifts of his blessing. And may God keep your hearts attentive to his words, that they may be filled with everlasting gladness. Amen. And so, may you always understand what is good and right, and be found ever hastening along in the path of God's commands, made co-heirs with the citizens of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, 
come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.
may be seated. And at this time, we'd like to recognize a certain individual that uh, needs to not only be recognized for his 75 year pin as a Catholic Order Forester, um, but also his uh, service to the Foresters, 60 years as a treasurer for it, um, but also all the wonderful things he does here for our parish and now for our cemetery as well. And, uh, and so just that wonderful prayerful presence, the wonderful example of faith and service and devotion for, um, for our church. And so at this time, I invite, where is he at? Marvin, there we are. Marvin Bernardi to come forward. I lied, that was last year, so you can go have a seat now again. I'm just kidding. Because of COVID last year, we weren't able to recognize your years of service. And so we thought we'd do it this year then. Um, I know that it's truly, like I said, a blessing. I know this is just a, a small token, you know, of your service to the church. Obviously, you, you go way beyond a, a pin and a plaque and, and things. Um, but uh, we truly are grateful, Marvin, for what you do, what you continue to do. And uh, the beauty that you bring also to our church and our worship space by the flowers that you, Maureen, bring as well. So I don't think any of the guys have any other comments. Congratulations, Marvin. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations. All right, so at this time, we will have, soon in a few moments, we'll be bringing the food up here. Um, and so there's, like I said, there's chips, there's cookies, there's water. Um, Marvin, do you want to say anything? I did all before. You said all before, okay. Thank you. All right, thank you. 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 Thank you.